Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Now in this video, I am going to be covering how you can start yield farming in 2024 for complete beginners. We're gonna be covering what yield farming is, the best resources to use, and I'm gonna cover live on how you can actually start jumping into a position today and what I would potentially maybe start looking at if I were a newbie in terms of starting yield farming. But before we get into the video, if you could please Hit the like button, subscribe down below if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below to let me know where you're at in your yield farming journey. Are you starting out? Are you sort of, you know, farming with a decent amount of capital? Are you look just kind of looking around where to start generating some cash flow on chain? Let me know. But yeah, with that being said, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Always do your own research and be very careful about what you're investing in crypto and DeFi because it is the riskiest stuff in the world. And with that said, let's jump into it. So if we take a look over on the crypto market, we can see you're going to need CoinGecko is the first, you know, sort of resource that I would use or CoinMarketCap, something where you can see just the overall sort of crypto market and what the prices are doing is probably the first thing that I'd recommend everyone having just so you can look at, you know, your own tokens just in general. And also this is helpful for your farming as well. The next resource that i'm going to tell you about is going to be DeFi llama this is everything DeFi. okay don't worry a lot of this is confusing i don't use half the information available in DeFi llama the main thing that you're going to need is the overview page and then you're going to come over to tvr and you can see the total amount of money in DeFi overall so right now is 95.73 billion as you can see we went up we peaked at about just under 200 billion in the last bull market and then we kind of went down to you know late 30s back in the bear market and then we're slowly climbing back up again and the next thing you're going to need is the volume and the volume will show you exactly how much volume is going on on a daily basis and the reason we need this is because when we're yield farming it's all dependent on volume okay so that's the next thing you need second thing you're going to potentially look at is the chains so you can see different chains that are coming out which is useful and also you're going to be looking at top protocols and then yields as well so top protocols you can filter by the different chain and you can see the top protocols on that chain which could potentially lead to some uh, to some farming opportunities right and then also the yields tab where you can search for different chains and then also you can see the yield on that chain right so that's how we're going to look at that so if we click clear okay and then select base then you can see all of the different yields on the base chain. You can filter by APY. Now, another thing I will say, which you'll find out in a second, the higher the APY, the higher the risk on an asset, okay? But for now, this DeFi Llama, CoinGecko, and then we're going to go ahead and jump over some other resources in a minute. So you're going to need uh, Crystal Finance, okay? Now, Crystal, I'll leave a link in the description. I currently do an airdrop. You can earn crystals. And they'll turn into crystal tokens, uh, which you can, yeah, you're just farming, you're just getting free money essentially. But you're going to need crystal, you're going to need coin gecko, you're going to need DeFi Llama. And I'm going to show you Aerodrome, Extra Finance, and Aperture as well. So those are the sort of one, two, three, four, five, six resources that you're probably going to need as a sort of baseline, potentially, depending on what you want to do. And we'll cover that in a minute. But that's the resource out of the way. There'll be links in the description to all of them. And uh, you, you'll see throughout this why we're going to need each one of them and you know what purpose they serve. So how does yield farming work? Well, first of all, let's go over to Uniswap here. Okay. And let's connect up our wallet. Okay. Let's connect up our wallet. So essentially how it works is a lot of the majority of the time you're going to be supplying liquidity over through Uniswap. Okay. Now, yield farming essentially, or liquidity mining, depending on how you want to call it, let's just call it yield farming. That they're slightly different, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. Let's just call it yield farming, right? So, what happens is if you're on chain, depending on what chain you're on, you're probably going to swap through Uniswap if you're on one of these chains that it supports. Okay, you could be swapping on PancakeSwap if you're on Binance Smart Chain. Um, and whatever chain you're on, you know, the native decks, but Uniswap is kind of like the big, the big boy decks in DeFi for multiple different chains. And this is where the majority of the volume th flows through in DeFi. So let's say I want to swap this almost to Ethereum for USDC, right? Well, if I do that, I'm going to get $6,000 for this. Now, if you take a look at this drop down, 
you'll see that I'll pay this $14 fee here to Uniswap. Now, this is it, this is a very small fee, this $14.94. However, this will be distributed between people that have supplied the liquidity between Ethereum and USDC on the base chain. So that is how essentially we get paid is when people swap, you see this tiny little fee that people pay, that's how we get paid. It's based on the fees. So we're essentially supplying a service to the network where we're supplying funds that people are able to trade through. So we're supplying the liquidity, people then able to make swaps between those two tokens that we're supplying liquidity for. And then we get paid based on that when people swap between those tokens. So that's why it's important that we take a look at the, uh, the volume on DeFi Llama because the more volume there is and the more swaps that are happening, of course, the more we're going to be paid. So you can see the volume over the past sort of few weeks. Uh, you can see yesterday was pretty high on the 24th, 7 billion, 4 billion. You know, the weekend was slightly less. You've got $8 billion, $9 billion days. So the more volume, the more we're going to get paid, okay? Now, I'm not going to cover networks like Solana in this video because that's completely separate uh, network. I'm not actually farming on Solana right now. So we're going to be covering just sort of the basics on EVM chains through MetaMask, okay? But that is essentially how we get paid is through people swapping, right? We supply the, the liquidity, people swap, we get paid this fee. Um, so that's essentially how it works. So how the hell do you even start this? Well, first of all, if you're very baseline, you need to get funds on chain. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because you probably have funds on chain if you're watching this, right? So how does it work? Well, the reason I mentioned Crystal is because over on Crystal here, you can go to Explorer and then Hot Pools and you can see some of the pools that are available right now so if we stick on base for now um just so we can kind of see how things are moving if you click on base you'll see the best apr pairs okay and then you'll also see the best blue chip pools and you'll see best stablecoin pools so if you're brand new i'd recommend sticking with the blue chip positions just because again you know what you're sort of investing in because they're blue chip positions they're probably lower risk and they're not crazy high aprs where you know you're going to get wrecked on impairment loss which we'll discuss in a minute as well so if we click into the weath and usdc pair here and uh, let's just say uniswap weath and usdc okay let's click on here now one thing to look at when you're looking at crystal when you're looking at positions you want to see here the apr is pretty important okay let me go back here the apr is pretty important the tvl is important and the volume is important so TVL is important because we don't want to be in a position where we're stuck in that position, okay? We're, we don't want to be in that scenario where we're stuck in that liquidity position and we can't remove our funds because there's no liquidity, there's no TVL in that pool. So I like to see anything above sort of 500k. Now, if I'm going on a riskier pool, let's say a meme coin position that has a crazy APR, I'm not too concerned about impairment loss and it's a tiny portion of my portfolio that I'm okay with risking to potentially generate some huge rewards in the short term. Then, you know, potentially I'd look at 200, 250K TVL. But if I'm going into a long-term position, I like to see at least, you know, 500K to a million TVL. Volume is important as well, because again, the more volume there is, the more we get paid. This one is a very, very good t uh, volume, $28 million in the last 24 hours. Um, APR isn't as high on this, 66.92%, but that's per year. So, you know, if you're going to look at, APRs in traditional finance, you know, you'd be looking at sort of 12% as a maximum sort of thing on an average. So you can kind of weigh up the the risks and the benefits, the pros and cons of that, right? So if we click into this position here, if we click the detail. Now, by the way, the APR on something like Crystal or another sort of TV or another uh, research platform where it shows you APRs for yield farming pools, they are estimated. Now, they are based, they're calculated over the previous 24 hours of uh, rewards. So do keep that in mind that they're not going to be 100% accurate. Um, do not base everything off of the, these numbers here. Okay, it's all going to be super, super, um, yeah, you know, just sort of estimated. Use it as a benchmark. Don't say it's 100%. You know, if you look 24 hours and it's not, you know, you calculate the APR and it's not the same. Again, it's not 100% accurate. It's just sort of estimated. Now, it's going to be very difficult to get an exact APR. And the reason for that is because it's completely dependent on the volume. Now, you know, these platforms don't know what tomorrow's volume is going to be or next week's volume is going to be on, you know, three months from now. So they can't guarantee an APR. 
So it's going to change all the time. Now, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to have to pick a range where we're going to be supplying liquidity. Now, on Uniswap, we're going to cover some other things in a minute. But on Uniswap, this is called concentrated liquidity. OK, and the reason and what that means is essentially your liquidity is concentrated between a certain range. So here what you do is you supply the price range that you want to supply liquidity for. So by default on Crystal right now, the price range is set between Ethereum being $3,259 and $3,956. So we'll have liquidity supplied between this price of Ethereum. Now, if it goes below this range here, okay, so if it goes below the $3,259, our position will be out of range and we won't be we won't be claiming or earning any fees. And then if it goes above this $3,956 range, same thing happens. We won't be generating any fees. Now, what happens when we're out of range is if it's on the lower end here, we will have it will convert our position all into ethereum okay and if we're on the higher range it will convert everything into usdc so to pick a range um what you will probably look at doing is taking a look at some analysis uh now ethereum if we take a look here we'll just have a look i know this isn't the exact chart but we'll just you know for example purposes now you want to be looking probably at the four hour chart and you want to say okay i think ethereum is going to go Let's say I, I think Ethereum is going to be going down potentially to $3,250 because the lowest over the past sort of few months, right? Now, I would probably look at a chart over the last sort of couple of months if you're looking at supplying it on a long term basis. So let's say the lowest on the over the last sort of couple of months is $3,250. So if we go into here, 3258, that's fine how it's already selected it. And then a high of uh, almost four thousand dollars but you probably won't want to hit the you know exact highest point maybe a little bit under so let's say three thousand seven hundred dollars or something like that so we're gonna select three thousand seven hundred dollars okay now you can see deposit liquidity again this is just an example let's say we want to put ten thousand dollars into this pool we're gonna potentially make four percent per month on this again this varies so do not take this as gospel you know do not rely on this but you could be making about $13 a day, okay? And this is how your liquidity is distributed, right? So there's a chart here in terms of how much your liquidity is going to be distributed. So you've got a 3.62% on the lower end and 9.44% on the higher end in terms of the price. Now, there are some auto-selected price ranges on Crystal, which you can go ahead and supply. You can do the best narrow range, which is very narrow, uh, which will probably go in and out of uh, in and out of uh, range okay you've got the wide you've got a wide range which is pretty wide 30 percent each side now the the monthly apr is going to be or the apr is going to be a lot lower because you're diluted a lot more you know you're spreading your liquidity pretty thin in terms of over a higher price range so you know your liquidity is going to be diluted a lot more therefore you're not going to earn as much fees but you won't be going out of range and the full range is literally from zero to infinite, uh, which you're barely going to be making anything on that. So I'd never recommend full range unless it's on an extremely risky token that's literally just launched for a couple of days, something like that. But once you've done your technical analysis, you've had a look at the charts. That wasn't any technical analysis. I was just kind of picking ranges based on that. OK, you can click add liquidity. So what will happen is you can come over here and you'll select your, you know, your price range, which you can put in here. And then you can zap in, okay? You can zap in with any token you want. So if you've got Ethereum on chain, for example, you can zap in your Ethereum and it will go ahead and swap the Ethereum for the two tokens and add it to the liquidity and it will do it all for you, right? Which is pretty cool. So that is a nice little feature. That is why Crystal is very, very helpful. And then you can go to your profile and you can see those positions. You can claim your fees. Uh, you can reinvest your fees and all that good stuff within crystal and also doing it through crystal helps with your points okay you can see down here that when you zap in you're going to earn points based on the volume when you compound your fees you're going to earn points based on the volume when you rebalance based on volume collect fees based on volume you can use their swap feature which will get you 10 crystals for every dollar so every thousand dollars you swap on here you're going to get ten thousand crystals which do stack up pretty quickly um so that is Crystal, 
okay? That is how you go into enter a new position or what I'd recommend for beginners anyway. Um, now, again, this is mainly just like a beginner guy. I'm not going to get into more in-depth stuff such as revert, revert finance and stuff like that. So that is yield farming on Uniswap, okay? And then every time in that example, every time someone swaps between a uh, between Ethereum and USDC, then you are going to earn a portion of those fees. Next thing I'm going to cover is Aerodrome or something like Aerodrome. So a DEX on a chain, you can supply liquidity through, okay? So I'm going to give an example of this OVM position. I'm in this position myself. I have about $4,500 farming on this one, uh, which is getting 250, 225% APR right now. So here's the difference between farming on a DEX versus farming on Uniswap. Farming on a DEX, okay, if you if we hit deposit on here, essentially the difference between this is this isn't concentrated liquidity. Okay, so you're going to need 50-50 of each token on a DEX such as Aerodrome. So let's say I want to farm with, I don't know, 10 OVN, which is about $550, something like that. You're also going to need 494 USD plus. So mo mo most of the time when you're farming over on a DEX like Aerodrome, this is the same value as this. Okay, you're going to need two tokens which have the same value. You're going to allow the tokens and then it's going to go in and you're going to deposit. And then you can go over to dashboard and you can see you're going to start getting these emissions. Now over here, you're claiming or they're giving you emissions, which the emissions is usually in their native token, which is going to be Aero in this case. So again, the difference between Uniswap is you're picking a specific range that's concentrated liquidity and with your rewards, you're earning the token. So the rewards on Uniswap on that pool that we just did an example on, the rewards you're going to be earning are going to be in Ethereum and USDC versus farming on something, a DEX like Aerodrome, your fees, you're going to be rewarded in the native DEX token, which in this case is Aero, and it's not going to be concentrated. You're just supplying liquidity on that chain, and then you're going to be granted emissions every time someone swaps on that. Now, there's pros and cons to both of these. Um, there are pros and cons to both of these, so it really just is dependent on you what you want to be earning in. If you want to be earning in the Aero token or something similar, you know, a DEX on a native chain, then the downside to this is, of course, you're earning an Aero and, you know, Aerodrome is the token for this. So people that are farming on Aero, they're probably going to want to be claiming their rewards. They're going to be selling this. So, you know, you could be in a pool such as, if we go to liquidity here, you could be in an Aero pool, right? You could be in this Aero pool earning 88% per year, but also you could be, you know, you're earning arrow as well, which is being dumped. So there's some, you know, kind of conflict of interest there if you like, but that's just dependent on you and your strategy, how you want to go around that. So you kind of have to make that decision for yourself, what you want to do there. So let's talk about impermanent loss. So when your position goes out of range, okay, on the lower end. So again, let's go back to crystal and go back to um, hot pools. And we're going to go to base again, and then we're going to search we'll just go on to this Ethereum position, okay? So when you are when you have impermanent loss, let's say, for example, it goes below 3259, you're going to be all in Ethereum. Now, because you're entering the position when Ethereum is worth $3,379, you're obviously going to lose money. Now, when this goes out of range, the only way you're going to get back into range is if you sell the Ethereum and get the required... Ethereum and USDC distribution again, which of course you're going to be locking in that loss. So the worst thing you want to do, okay, when you're in a pool such as WETH and USDC, when there's a stable coin attached to it, when there's an asset and a stable coin, Ethereum and USDC in this case, you don't want to be selling and rebalancing your position when it's at this price here or lower and you've been out of range for a while and Ethereum isn't coming back up and it's kind of stagnant between a certain range. You want to be earning again and I get it. But just bear in mind that when you do go ahead and sell the token to get back into range, you're going to be locking in that loss. So you do have to keep that in mind. Now, the only use case for this or the only, um, you know, the good thing when you do this is hopefully you've been in range for a while. You've generated some fees and you're in profit. So when you have that impermanent loss, but you've already made back what that loss would have been in fees over the past sort of couple of months that has been in range and earning for you. 
So do keep that in mind. There is a way to profit from rebalancing, but the last thing you want to do is be rebalancing. Now, if it goes above this price here on the upper end, of course you're in profit. So, um, you know, it, it's above your entry fee, right? Which is 3,377 3, and Ethereum is now almost $4,000. So of course you've made a profit. So you can go ahead and sell that, get the correct Ethereum and USDC distribution and then go back into the pool. And you would have made money doing that anyway, plus the emissions, which is, of course, is the sort of goal to make profit, right? Which I've been doing for quite a few months now. So what way can we avoid in permanent loss? So one way to potentially avoid it is by going into positions that do not have a stable coin attached to it. So you can see this pool here is with an OVN, which is two assets. OK, so if we go into this and I'll show you, I wouldn't jump into this pool because that has very low TVL. But for example, here you're going to be picking now as quite different in the price range because instead of with and USDC, we're supplying a price range based on how many OVN it costs to get one Ethereum. So this is going to be slightly different. So we're going to need 62.79. So right now, okay, we're going to need, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so the price right now is, you can see it is 68.61 OVN. Okay, here it is, current price, 66.6 .6 OVN for one Ethereum. So you can pick the range based on that. So that's how we're going to be picking our range here is how many OVN we're going to get per Ethereum. Okay, so when this goes out of range on the lower end, you're going to be converted into Ethereum. When you go into the price on the upper end, you're going to be converted into OVN. Now, the reason this is a benefit versus a stable coin is because, of course, this is an asset. This price can move. A stable coin's price cannot move. So if you're, you know, locked and you go out of range and it's going to be supplied into or it's going to be converted, sorry, into Ethereum, that's good news because now you're holding Ethereum and hopefully you believe in OVN. Otherwise, you wouldn't jump into the position, which we'll talk about next. But when you go into something like OVN, uh, sorry, when you when it converts into OVN, if you go out on this range, again, hopefully OVN is running. That means you'll make even more profit. But when it goes out of range on this end, when it comes to stablecoin positions, your price, the, the position can't go up anymore. It's just going to stay stagnant because you convert into a stablecoin and stablecoins do not move. So a correlated pair like this is a good idea um, for impairment loss you know, reasons when you go out of range. But again, prices can move on both ends. So there's a downside to that. At least when you're in a asset and stablecoin pool, the price can only move on one end of the position versus when you're in an asset to asset, a correlated pool, it can move on both ends. So do keep that in mind as well. Okay, so that covers pretty much the basics with starting to get involved in yield farming. Uh, I think the next thing that we'll go ahead and look at is beefy finance. So let's open beefy and have a look. So BV Finance is another resource that I'd recommend checking out. I have a link in the dis I have a link as well for this one. Um, but if you take a look, you can see if we take a look at the same OVN pool that we're in over on Aerodrome, you can see here that the APY is 653% versus over on Aero, it is OVN. Let's see, it is two, only 224%. So there's a you know, the APR on Beefy is four times more. Now, why is that? And that is because this auto compounds for you. So when you're supplying it over on a DEX, such as Aerodrome, you, I showed you earlier on the dashboard that we have to come in and claim the emissions versus on something like Beefy Finance. Okay, this is an auto compounder. So this is the exact same pool, but instead what they're doing, instead of claiming your fees every time, it's going ahead and recompounding those fees back into the pool. So your position is growing um, when your emissions come through, which there's pros and cons to them both. I personally prefer something like Aerodrome where I can claim the emissions myself. The good thing about this is if you're in it for the long run and you don't really care about, you know, you don't want necessarily, you, you can still use this for cash flow because you can come ahead and you can come and withdraw as much of this LP as you want. You know, you can come ahead and withdraw like a tiny amount and then claim your uh, fees or claim your rewards for the week. But I prefer just doing it all manually. You can sort of do it when it compounds. You can just kind of set it and forget it and let it just compound up. 
um, which is, and if we take a look, I do have one vault in here, this GLP position. If we take a look into this, APR is very low. Um, I chucked this in here a very long time ago, actually. Um, probably, yeah, I chucked this in a very long time ago, back in, I think it was over a year ago. And the reason I did this is, again, it's kind of like a, an ETF, if you like. You've got USDC with Bitcoin, Diafrax, USDT, Link, Uni, and uh, yeah, in there. So I put $497 in back way over a year ago. Uh, it's now worth $805, which is a gain of $307. Uh, we've got $94 and basically $95 of that has been yield. And the rest of it has come from PNL from the tokens, obviously going up from a year ago. So up 61% on this position over a year. But I'm just going to set this and, and forget it over in Beefy. And it has worked out. But again, I kind of just put this in here last year because uh, GLP it was pretty it was very hard to get um, but you know I could I got hold of some and then there we go but yeah that's the benefit of beefy is that it's auto compounding now one thing that I would strongly recommend avoiding is coming and having a look and just filtering by APY and you can see oh this token has 1700% if we go into here and have a look you know, if we take a look and go even to the full range and I supply $1,000, I'm going to be making 21% per month. Yes, but also you need to take a look at this crash token. I can pretty much almost guarantee you by even looking, this is a very risky token or a meme coin. Now, if we even go to the you know lower range, we're going to be making 146% per month. Well, again, you got to be very careful about that. Or even if I go very narrow, we're going to be earning $8,000 a month on $1,000, right? So again, you've got to be very careful. Now, the only time that I would really look at meme coin positions is if you are, you know, you've got a tiny amount of your portfolio that you're happy risking that could go to zero. You know, this thousand dollars could go to zero very quickly in this pool. Um, the, you know, you're happy supplying. I even go in sometimes with these pools with like $250 and maybe go to like the wide position and see how much fees I can earn. Um, and it has paid off a couple of times, you know, I've made more fees in 24 hours than my liquidity. So sometimes that can happen, but you just have to be very careful. So yeah, there you go. There are the basics of yield farming and what to look for. Um, you've got extra finance as well, which is leveraged farming. So you can come into here and you can borrow assets to go ahead and gain an extra APR. So you can see I went into USDC and Aerodrome here. If we take a look at my position, I think I supplied maybe... Two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and you can see my equity value is now worth four hundred and eighty. With the uh, leverage that I borrowed, it's now worth six hundred and twenty-two, and you can see I make about one dollar twenty-nine per day, and I've earned two hundred and sixty-four and fifteen cents. So if I go ahead and close this position, you'll see that I'll come out with four hundred and eighty dollars, pretty much. And I went into this of like you know two hundred and fifty or something. So you can come in here and borrow uh, some assets to farm. So if we go ahead and have a look at this extra and weath farm here, and I want to supply, I don't know, 0.1 ETH, which is a few hundred bucks, right? I can go ahead and set my leverage. I can borrow up to it. So if I do zero leverage, okay, you'll see that I will make 0.14% per day. But if I went ahead and borrowed up to 2x leverage, you can see that I will essentially double that APR and earn 0.24%. So this is another thing is leverage, which again is, yeah, sort of very risky. Uh, it just depends on, you know, how much you know about leverage, your risk tolerance, all that good stuff. But I don't want this to get too long. So I'm not going to go too much more into leverage, but that is the basics of yield farming. You can then go ahead and experiment with different things. Now, I was going to say Aperture. Now, Aperture is kind of another version of um, of Crystal. You can come in here and manage your positions. So I've got this Arbitrum pool. Okay, let's actually go ahead and take a look at this Weath pool here on base. This is out of range. So, you know, it's not earning any fees, but you can see I can rebalance from here. I can reinvest. I can collect fees. I can add liquidity, remove liquidity, etc. All from here. And every time you refresh, you'll see your rewards up to date as well. So that is a good thing with Aperture. Now you can go ahead and automate your, uh, you can go ahead and automate your uh, your liquidity positions with rebalancing. But, you know, again, this is all kind of not very basic stuff. So I will cover this separately 
later down the line. But that is the basics. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.